Oh. All right, let's go for the kill. Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I just finished reviewing the first four Terminator films that I reviewed, excluding Genesis because I already reviewed that film back in 2015, and there's no way do I want to review that again, or do a retake or whatever. What's the point? They already ruined the franchise when he had to restart this whole thing over again with bad casting choices, horrible script, thinking that, you know, they tried it once, they'll try it again, hoping this will be the end, but nope, it just continues. Because it just won't die. <laughs> but this time, after just taking a little bit of a break, you know, just posting all the videos from my YouTube channel to my new channel, BitChute. Having a difficult time as it is for a slow start. Like, so far I had like 48 videos, but I'm keeping up. It's not going to be easy. I mean, even by January it'll probably take as much as it could. I mean, I'm probably going to end up spending like month and a half just getting it done before the time comes or whatever but anyway I did finally solve Terminator Dark Fate and let me tell you something after seeing this from the beginning to the middle all the way to the end I am not surprised to say that Genesis is not the only worst film of the franchise. Far from that. This is. I mean, I know. They tried. They tried. But I even knew it was going to fail. I knew it. And this time around, just like pretty much every single film franchise out there that's being, you know, remade or redo or <laughs> reboot or, you know, any other, they had to force fed with politics, with political agenda, woke, SJW, propaganda that won't fucking die. Think about that. I guess they just want to make females sexist. Obviously. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like we want more power to them. That's what they're trying to do. They're forcing us to, to root for them. Hey, I like to have strong female characters too in movies, alright? There's nothing wrong with that. I said it before and I'll say it again. The problem is, it's the force fed of this propaganda that won't fucking stop. All they're trying to do is, you know, is bringing all males down. Saying that, you know, we're pigs. We don't care. That to me is offensive, insulting, and incredibly cruel. We didn't say any of this stuff. These idiots did. We're not fucking incels, misogynists, or any other. We're fucking human beings, damn it. You know, we're all from coming from different genders, race, all kids to adults, to seniors. I mean, come on, guys. Wake up. And speaking of which, because now they're going for the phrase, go woke or go broke. <laughs> oh, brother, man. Well, I can see why this film is failing at the box office. 
Because no one wants to see this shit. No one wants to be able to be forced with, with politics in movies. And next thing you know, these films are getting positive feedbacks. Because I'm not even so sure who has taste anymore. I mean, look what happened to all the films that we got already in the past couple years. And once again, they just keep blaming us for all of these films that we have. Because that's why no one just go out to see it. So what? There's better movies out there, okay? The problem is, I wish they had more hype. I thought I wish they had more attention. I wish they'd done so well. I wish we had better action films these days. Yeah, better ones that doesn't rely on bad CGI. Maybe better storyline or something like that. Okay? I just want to have fun. What point do you guys understand? And yes, the movie is boring. Incredibly boring. I didn't get any excitement whatsoever. I sure as hell didn't see any of that. It sure was a waste of two hours of my entire life. That I'll never get back. But before I get to this, okay, I knew this was going to happen. I knew right from the start that, and I'm not surprised, that they were going to kill off the savior of the resistance, John Connor. I'm sorry I had to spoil the surprise. It's already been spoiled already by many people who have reviewed this fucking movie. Okay? To me, I already knew that. Because, what do you expect when I saw the stupid trailer? Or even the second trailer? I didn't see John Connor in any of these shots. So, why would I want to see him back? I mean, they kept teasing him, teasing him, and teasing, you know, Everett Furlong, hoping that he'll make a good comeback, even as he's older now. We knew he wasn't going to be in it. So that's just dumb. <sighs> anyway, so we had to go for a, a female... Um, actress who obviously can't act and it's a Mexican playing Danny Ramos so she's going to be the next uh, savior of the resistance but it isn't Skynet this time it's Legion an artificial intelligent uh, company that's uh, wiping out uh, the human race sending out all these machines to take over. But these are quite different from the usual Terminators that are indoor skeletons. But yes, we do get ones that are now known as Rebel Nines or even more. <laughs> so. so now we have. Um, Linda Hamilton reprising the role as Sarah Connor. It's nice to see her again after all these years. Arnold Schwarzenegger comes back once again as the Terminator, or at this rate, he now has a new name called Carl. And then we got uh, a new Terminator that's out to uh, kill Danny named Gabriel Reb9 and of course we got a, a soldier who came from the future to protect her named Grace yeah, yeah. that's new 
So this time, James Cameron finally returns. He's the producer, and he's also responsible for the story, joining in with four other writers, uh, including Josh Friedman, who wrote Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, the TV series. But he was also responsible for writing the War of the Worlds remake, as well as the Black Dahlia. Yes, he actually got David S. Goyer, the writer of the Dark Knight trilogy, but he has write some bad scripts too, so, so now I know I'm in trouble. Uh, then there's Justin Rhodes and Charles H. Eakley, who did uh, Birds of Paradise. So this is just another canon to the franchise, and they had to change everything. They had to ruin the first two films again. Like if no one cares. Set in Mexico, of course, because that's how it was set um, when uh, Sarah Connor had went all the way through the storm. So, well, we had to go for everything here. <sighs> okay, I know. Not a great way to start this review, but I'm sorry. It's not my fault that that these filmmakers have to make this. And what's also sad, though, is that Tim Miller, of Deadpool fame, his one-hit wonder, actually directed this. The same man who gave us Deadpool to life. I guess Ryan Reynolds you know, really did have a hard time with this director, so they had to move on with uh, John Wick's director, David Leach. You know what? I'm glad to see that uh, Ryan Reynolds made the right decision. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yes, the movie is produced by Paramount Pictures, since they just released Genesis. Uh, joining in with Skydance and 20th Century Fox is co-producing the film too with Tencent Pictures, uh, which is a uh, a company in China, which is the company that gave us films like uh, Consco Island, among recent films. Uh, Lightstorm Entertainment, so yeah, James Cameron's production company, and TSG Entertainment. Yes, which just happens to be the finance company of of all the uh, Fox films that they produced. Yeah, it's hard to believe, though, man, because I expected more from Cameron. I mean, after all, he did gave us uh, Alita: Battle Angel, which I love this year, and that's a way better film. That. I expected better from him, but it just seemed like he's just wasting his time. Well, anyway, let's get to this fucking review. It stars Linda Hamilton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mackenzie Davis, Natalia Rice, Gabriel Luna from the TV series uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Diego Bonetta, Tristan Ola, Alicia Boachero, Eureka Ars, Tom Hopper, and Stuart McQuarrie, which actually has Jude Colley using as a body double for John Connor, but they just use CGI to create him from Edward Furlong directly from the 1991 film Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It's written by James Cameron, Charles H. Eakley, Josh Friedman, David S. Goyer, Justin Rhodes, and even Billy Ray. I forgot to mention him. And no, it's not Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> My heart be still. And it's directed by Tim Miller. The movie began set in 1988 at Livingston, Guatemala. And both Sarah Connor, played by Linda Hamilton, who joins in with her son, John Connor, 
course, was Edward Furlong in CGI form. So they just cast a different actor to play the part. Because they took the image from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Well, anyway, this was three years after they prevented um, the nuclear holocaust of Judgment Day to start you know, after the threat of Skynet. So they wanted to prevent it from not happening so they could save billions of lives. Apparently, they were at a local beach, you know, they were having fun together, to all of a sudden, the Terminator T-800, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, playing the role, was sent back through time, through Skynet, and brutally murdered John Connor, completely. Yes, right in front of her. And that was like the first four minutes of the film that I saw. So 22 years later, an advanced Terminator called Rep 9, named Gabriel, played by, what else, Gabriel Luna, sent back in time to Mexico City to murder a young woman named Daniela Danny Ramos, played by Natalia Rice. We're, and then suddenly we have a cybernetic and tan soldier named Grace, played by Mackenzie Davis, who was sent to protect her. Now why was that? Because, well, they changed the timeline. They had to erase everything from existence. They knew that they were going to fail. So now we have to join in with someone different this time that's only it's not a male it's a female yes so now Danny happens to be the savior of the resistance and instead of Skynet it's an AI no it's an AI called Legion so at this rate Danny had sent Grace to save her as her younger self, so that way the Terminator doesn't kill her. Because, you know, they're at war. Anyway, the Rev-9 disguises her as her fodder. It federates the assembly giant that splits itself from a cybernetic indoor skeleton and a shape-shifting liquid metal. So, yes. He can actually do both. You know, like, for example, in, in the scene where where Grace suddenly uh, takes um, both uh, Danny and Diego, who's played by Diego Bonetta, happens to be Danny's younger brother, um, they went to the factory, only to, be at, to find out that her father's been killed, murdered, so now um, Grace had uh, escaped along with uh, their siblings and decided to uh, be chased down by Gabriel, ready to attack. So that's where we have this long chase scene you know, all the way through. Yeah, I mean between the trucks and, and the other truck. And yes, that's where we see uh, Gabriel actually splitting apart. So it's like his indoor skeleton takes over the reel while he continues to go attack them you know, using all these uh, these skills and and creating um, his liquid metal exteriors to stop them. Yeah. All of a sudden Sarah Connor arrives temporarily disables the Terminator with explosives. Yeah, she has the uh, grenade launchers and everything. Now she's all older wiser and pretty bitter especially since um, she just couldn't stop thinking about the death of her son and seeing that everything has changed since then well look no further um, 
we learned that uh, grace um, has suddenly became completely dehydrated because, uh, well, she, she was criminally ruined as a commander of the resistance that's sent from the future. Seeing that she only comes in during the short periods of time that she had to be sent, she had to require constant medication and nourishment in order for her to recover. So yeah, they had to give some water or some ice to to actually revive her. Yeah. So I, so that's when Danny, Grace, and Sarah had to retreat to a motel, hoping that she'll be able to recover. And then they had to explain about why did the Sarah came here, and why did he, why did she actually came to uh, bringing Grace and and Danny involved in this? Well, because she reveals that um, in the years of John's death, she's been receiving encrypted messages from her mobile devices and all of that stuff. But of course, she, you know all these texting and all these text messages, and she had to block them so that way she won't get tracked by she won't get tracked down by many of the Skynets or or this rate Legion, you know, going after her. So she had to use uh, potato chip bags to, to block it, the signal. Because all the Terminators will, will be able to find her. Anyway. But they all ended with for John and every single text message. So Grace notes that Skynet nor John no longer exist in her timeline, so of course it's Legion, which is an AI um, that's run by him that controls all the machines, because they had a war too. The war against the resistance to save humanity from the machines. Okay, I know I'm talking a little bit. Anyway, they were designed by Cyber Warfare. They took over servers worldwide and they tried to new neutralize it with nuclear weapons, but of course they had a nuclear holocaust that happened. So it's a global network of machines to terminate them. So Grace had traced Sarah's message all the way to Laredo, Texas, which then Rev9 just follows their, tr follows their path along with the authorities, so they they arrive at their source when they discover that well, the Terminator the T-800 that actually murdered John well, his name is Carl basically he's Terminator T-101 which happens to be the one from Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines he's now a Draper where he just he you know, makes all these draperies uh, for houses around, and he also adopts um, a woman and child. You know, so that way, you know, he'd be able to live together. You know, taking care of the family, so that way he can move on with his life. He did realize that uh, he has a conscience, knowing that he felt pretty bad about what he did, but. That was just part of his mission that he had to choose. Otherwise, what else could he do? I never thought I would see that for a Terminator like uh, the T-800. I mean, because this is the same one that was going to murder Sarah Connor. Also, but of course, the same one that's reprogrammed to save John Connor. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. So, of course, as far as years is concerned, though, I mean, Sarah just couldn't get along with him after having to deal with the death of her son, so, of course, since he was responsible. So, even he couldn't blame him. 
So yes, they had to get some more weapons, so that way they'll be able to stop them. Look no further, so yes, there's going to be another chase scene coming around. They were already being caught um, by all the authorities around. I mean, you know, they were arrested, they were taken down, but they escaped once um, the Rev-9 had came to their paths and just, you know, full with disguises, you know, even using the sky's voices, just ready to attack them. I mean, of course, he even kills so some people here and there, you know, stabbing them and all that, and then just you know, they lead to a chase scene. You know, they're going all the way up to you know the airplane or helicopter or whatever. I mean. that sort of thing. But of course, joining in with Carl, you know, they had to drive with their, with Carl's band, and fill with all the weaponries that they need to survive, so they'll be able to stop them. And, you know, they actually had to drive all the way, they actually had to call in a soldier to, to be where they are, and, and they just, well, <laughs> They had to steal the, the plane where they actually put in the, the jeep in the cargo bay and a lot of fight scenes here and there. And Sarah joining in with Danny and and Grace had to escape as soon as they can until we had to get another fight scene here and there. They wound up landing all the way down to, to the dam and then well, they just continued. I mean, already um, Grace has been injured, wounded completely, and starting to get dehydrated again. And there are more fight scenes to happen with Carl trying to stop um, Rev 9, joining in with Sarah. Even Danny was trying to uh, bring in the gun, trying to be tough. Of course, because um, we did saw the background story of Danny, where yes, she became the leader. She's the one that saved uh, Grace, because Grace was uh, a little girl who experienced what was going to happen during the nuclear holocaust, hoping that things would be normal, but it ain't. After they saw the plane crash, now, uh, well. It was part of the mission for Grace to um, save her, so now have Danny save Sarah along with um, Terminator and Carl to actually stop Rev 9, which at this rate Kyle would later stop him as well and all lead to his death with him and by putting the the bomb that was inside Grace just chest. Yep, terminated. Now um, <laughs> Grace was gone. And, well, now Danny and Sarah have moved on, hoping for a new journey. Well, that's all I had to say, man. I mean, I, I know it's it's kind of rough to explain it. But the movie is so bad, I just... I'm just fucking tired of having to talk about it, but... But hey, it's, it's not my fault that this movie had fucking problems. But let, let's just get this straight here. I mean... I'm going to say this. The actress, Natalia Rice, okay, I hate to be um, hard on this actress so much. I know she's trying her best. I'm sorry. I thought she was terrible in this movie. She just can't act. I didn't buy her as the savior of the Resistance. And I really didn't buy her character at all because I thought... Geez, I mean, is this the best they could do? You know, let's go for someone with diversity and and 
a different gender to become the stronger leader. That's just fucking weak. I mean, she she was incredibly weak, completely. I, I just, I don't understand. She, she can't even hold the damn gun right. Or at least she's trying to, but... But her attitude, I, I swear, I, I couldn't even understand her, too. Seriously, I mean, what the hell were these writers thinking? And see, it was even amazing, too, because I heard that from the test audience that they didn't like her character. They didn't like her so much that they wanted to get this off. But guess what? They left her in. They could have thought about casting someone better than Natalia Rise or something. I just don't understand. Uh, the character um, Reb Nine, which is Gabriel, eh, he was a bit so-so for me. I mean, it's basically what you expect from all the Terminators we have seen already. I mean, this guy can't even hold the grace to uh, <laughs> to both. Um, the Terminator T-800 or the Terminatrix uh, TX, of course, or hell, even T-1000. So this is just another generic type. So I don't know. I mean, it, I, I understand. We have to go for that. But it's a Mexican Terminator, and that's all we got. And it's just a... Uh, uh, on the other hand, though, I thought Mackenzie Davis was, was fine in the role of Grace. I mean, she was strong, but I know she had trouble uh, dealing with uh, her dehydration and, you know, having to deal with all these critical wounds that she got. But deep down of it, you know, she was sent. You know, she's trying to teach Danny that, you know, of course, everyone's going to die, so... Of course, if you die, everyone will. It's also telling her not to, uh, you know, not to get involved in this. Okay, don't kill anyone. Don't actually stop the mission because, well, you know what was going to happen. But I know Danny didn't want to leave um, Sarah behind, though. So she didn't want to deal with the fate that's happening. So whatever. Oh, I don't know. But as for uh, Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger, I mean, granted, I was happy to see Hamilton back, but she she deserves better than this. I mean, you know, she's given some shitty dialogue that I, I do wish, you know, she was written better. I mean, I know she was strong, just like how she was in Terminator 2, Judgment Day, but they had to make her so bitter, even as an old woman. I mean, but I, 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 I understand. I mean, I couldn't blame her for, for losing John. And speaking of John Connor, I mean, it was bad enough they had to make him into a villain, or what seems to be. For Genesis, but boy, did they have to go this far. And they brought no respect to Everett Furlong. You should be ashamed of yourselves, guys. But okay, back to Schwarzenegger. Well, Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger was alright, but still, even his character was pretty wasted. I mean, they had to change everything to make this character you know different from one another I mean yes of course you know he feels no pity no remorse no no fear no pain but geez you know I never thought that they can actually change his character so quickly maybe for a, a very long time you know but he becomes a family man, you know, he's he's a draper, he can do everything, he can change diapers. I just didn't buy this at all, really. 
But I, I even predicted that he was going to die anyway. I mean, it happens to all the series. I mean, the only one where he doesn't get killed is Genesis, and he was already being reprogrammed. He now has you know liquid metal all inside him, so now he's fully improved in the last part of the film. Uh, the special effects were incredibly awful. Bad CGI. I couldn't believe it. I mean, yeah, you think of it this way. By 1991 standards, though, the CGI was as impressive as ever. It still holds up compared to the CGI of today. It looks like, you know, it hasn't been finished. hasn't been done. And it still didn't look this good. The action scenes in the movie... I don't know. They weren't exactly as impressive as I thought they would. There's a lot of the chase scenes, as I mentioned. The ones with the cargo plane, the ones with the helicopter, the ones with the trucks. You know, everything from Mexico to Texas. I mean, I've seen it, okay? I get it. This doesn't live up to the action scenes I've seen in, in all four... All four movies, per se. I mean... And yes, even the TV series, it had better action scenes than anything this one has. And just, same goes with Genesis. Yeah, because I thought Genesis had the worst uh, action scenes I've seen, including the one with the school bus. I'm just so relieved that this film finally bombed. And that rightly so it deserves. Maybe I should thank everyone for spoiling it for everyone. Because now I know why people don't want to waste their time seeing it. After what they just did. To this beloved franchise. They just want to force political agenda, woke, SJWs, and all that crap down our throats. That's all it is. And then... This gets a pass from critics, by the way. This gets like a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes. Or I think it's 72 now. I don't know. I, I don't understand, man. Terminator Salvation gets a 33%, which, to me, that's bullshit. You know, they've been treating the third and fourth movies like crap. Not just from critics, but also from... Well, I mean, critics did enjoy the third film, I'll give you that. But from other fans out there who love the first two films, I mean, yes, they say that the first two films ended perfectly. I mean, yeah, they may say the third and fourth films were unnecessary. I wouldn't say that the TV series was unnecessary, but whatever. I mean, I... I you know, it's amazing, you know? We're stuck with the last two worst Terminator films already. That I'd just be happy that I'm glad that I defended the third and fourth films. Because that's what it should have ended in the first place. We got there. They didn't treat John Connor like shit. They didn't force uh, politics, all this you know, politically correct syndrome that we have to deal with. They didn't put any of this crap. No, they follow a great story here. I mean, sure, even if they had to do some major changes with the alternate timeline that, that they had to achieve for the first two films. Is that, yes, we wanted to see what happens next. But no one cares. So now we have to suffer. They had to ruin everything. It's like, no one cares. Just so we can get more sequels, uh, more, more franchises here and there. I mean, I don't know, man. I I'm just done with Terminator already. I mean, I don't even care if it gets another sequel. I mean, I sure as hell wouldn't want to see another sequel that features Danny Ramos. Hell no, man. I'll sit to John Connor instead. <sighs> Deserves better treatment, man. It was really stupid that they had to do this. <sighs> I 
mean, Cameron, what were you thinking, man? Why did you have to come back for this? I guess for fan services, I guess. Yeah, I guess because of fan service. <sighs> Whatever, man. And by the way, the score was done by Tom Hockenborg. Yeah, the same composer of Alita. Alita had a better score, though. I, I couldn't think of a memorable score this film has. The direction from Tim Miller was poor. The writing stinks, coming from five writers. I mean, it all suffers from... from humiliation. That's all it is. So, you know what? This film should be terminated at all costs. And that's... that's for sure. So anyway, that's Terminator Dark Fate, and I give the film zero stars. You're terminated, fucker. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. I'll see you later, much later. Bye.